was, was the your group in the second half in particular on Saturday? Um, it was good. It was fun to watch. It was exciting to see those guys gain confidence uh, in a little bit of adversity. You know, things kind of piled up quickly in the second quarter there. It was, um, you know, we made a couple of mistakes. We were, you know, had some situations that weren't ideal. And, you know, to, to be able to calm that group back down at halftime and then have them go out and perform the way we, uh, that they did was, was awesome. Was it just as simple as kind of getting Daniel Green back out there as well? It helped. It helped a lot. <laughs> Um, he's certainly a calming presence. I mean, he's a guy that's just uh, come into his own so so much. I think as a as a leader, as a um, you know, just a, a guy that people look to him and say, you know, that guy's going to get after it. I, I know that, and, he, and I think him kind of stepping into that role of being the guy where he wasn't that a year ago. I think that's what accounts for most of his progress. Not that it was a surprise, but did you expect Felix to kind of have that breakout game this soon? Not a surprise, no. I I did, yeah. I, he's a he's a special talent. I mean, he's and he's just getting started. I mean, he's just a he's just a pup. Um, I think one of the things that we did better in the second half was we put the D line in better positions to win, and I think um, I think that showed they, you know in the amount of disrupt that those guys had uh, in the final thirty minutes. What is it you saw from Felix preseason that made you realize he was gonna? Be good. He, he's just done some things with his body. I mean, we knew he was going to be good a year ago, uh, just watching him move around. He's got such twitch, uh, strength, heavy hands, um, you know, unassuming guy, but he's got, you know, length and just got kind of a, a presence about him. And I, I think that, uh, you know, a year ago when he was 230, 235, he was still kind of a kind of a baby. You know, now he's 255. Uh, he's, he's exploding a little bit. There's a lot of buzz around uh Russ, he's back home in Indiana. What can you tell his friends and his family back home about his adjustment to Kansas State and just what he means to the defense? He he, he is uh, spectacular. I mean, he's he's just a uh, really quiet guy, but he's just a, a, a guy that comes and works every day. He's a he's a grinder. He's a very smart football player. Really sharp. Really cares about the program. Really cares about his details. Um, his maturity. Uh, level has helped rub off on a lot of the younger players. Um, you know, he's not going to stand up in front of the room and, and give a speech, but he's he's going to go about his business quietly, and that's going to rub off on the other 110 guys on the team. How do you feel like Nick Allen did? You know, man, the the start in the first half snaps. There? He was good. He was good. He was solid. Um, you know, we 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 didn't we we played him a lot. I mean, he he uh, he had a, a series there where I think he went about 13 snaps in a row. Which, uh, which was a lot of people's fault, not his, but he, he was really solid in his, in his relief duties. What are Carson Strong's strengths? Uh, his arm talent is a strength. The fact that he takes care of the ball is a strength. Uh, doesn't throw interceptions, doesn't force dumb throws, doesn't, uh, um, doesn't put his team in bad situations. I think they put a lot on him uh, at the line of scrimmage to get them in the right plays. I think he does a good job of that. Uh, sees looks very well, sees coverage as well. Um, not a lot to say negative about the guy, to be honest with you. What you and uh, how good is it to have this three three five defense in your pocket to use against a guy like this? It's, uh, I, you know, to, to, for, for teams to go in, you know, with our old structure, I think he, he sees that stuff really well. And, um, you know, not that not that it can't be done against him. I mean, there's some teams in that league that, that have a very similar structure to what, what we do and, and have had some success with him, but he's just – um, I think the, the variety of rotations that we can give them now could potentially present problems. What are your observations up in the battle offense? I think they're they're <laughs> they're extremely talented across the board. I mean, when you look at a, a group that has as many seniors as they do, um, when you have a, a tight end that might be one of the best receiving tight ends in the country, when you've got a, a group of receivers that's probably probably three or four of those guys that anybody in the country would love to have. When you got a quarterback that's going to be a top five pick, you got linemen that have been three year starters, all Mountain West performers. You're, you're looking at a talented group. It's a scary. It's a scary outfit. How do you defend against tall receivers? What do you tell your defensive backs to focus on? You know, every matchup is different, and everybody has to play to their strengths uh, to a degree. Um, you know, a lot of our guys, uh, we, we have a, a decently physical group of, of DBs. And so, you know, philosophically, I think we like to try to get our hands on guys as much as we can and, and, and create as much disruption on the line of scrimmage as we can. And then, um, you know, we have some different methodologies that I won't go into too much that, that I think uh, pertain to a matchup-by-matchup uh, matchup basis. Is Sorry to skirt the question there. <laughs> is there a wide receiver group, something, a trend that gives you uh, – 
cause to go in your recruiting direction that you have with bigger backs, bigger cornerbacks? Yeah, I mean, I, and not just them, but I think the, the flavor across college football has been, um, you know, there's some there's some teams that do it schematically and try to get guys the ball in, in space and try to uh, trying to think of a way to articulate this. You know, their their route uh, patterns are, are what makes the receivers and the quarterback go. And then there's other teams that uh, recruit wide receivers that can win one on ones. And you know, Nevada's a, a challenge because they've got you know great conceptually they're they're very sound in what they do and they've got guys that can win one-on-ones and that's what makes the group really special does their offense kind of remind you of any other team that you have seen in the big 12 it's a big yeah it is it's a it's it's a i don't know i I hate to compare them to anybody but there's some there's some texas tech in there that you see from from years past uh there's some oklahoma state in there that you see from years past it's a it's a very big 12 ish type outfit does that prepare you Having seen those teams kind of help you prepare for a team like the Um you, you do see some some routes that maybe you've seen and, and have some ideas of how to defend those. Uh, I would say that it doesn't hurt. It, is Carlton Tong similar to any any quarterback you feel like you've had to face before, or is he kind of completely in his own? Well, I did practice against Carson Wentz for about three years. Okay, the same person name. So <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, it, it, he's just yeah. I mean, the the, the Big Twelve's got uh, a lot of talented quarterbacks. It's just how they use them is maybe a little bit unique to how other teams have. Anything else?